Hi and welcome to this CPD Revalidation Smith & Nephew Wound Club Online module on the Infection Management Pathway in Clinical Practice. It forms part of a series of modules that you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around infection management. My name is Lauren O'Lenzuk and I'm a Complex Wound Specialist at Smith & Nephew and today we will be discussing the Infection Management Pathway in Clinical Practice with two related case studies. By the end of this module, you'll be able to understand the use of antimicrobial products in the two cases that have been presented, and also to understand the role infection management pathways play in potentially improving outcomes. The development of clinical pathways addresses issues that are central to quality and modernisation agendas across health communities. Clinical pathways give the clinician the opportunity to potentially reduce variations in care. Limiting these variations in clinical practice can help to reduce costs and ultimately aim to improve clinical outcomes and the patient experience. You can now see on your screen the Smith & Nephew Infection Management Pathway, which helps clinicians to choose the most appropriate treatment for patients in their care and for wounds displaying signs of infection. As a result of following the pathway, the case studies presented demonstrate the value of the pathway and how it has impacted on patient outcomes. Okay, so let's look at case study one. This 80 year old patient presented with a surgical wound on the upper left leg following a coronary artery bypass graft. Notable medical history included type two diabetes and diabetic neuropathy. You can see the signs and symptoms that were associated with this wound on the first assessment. Edge date levels at this initial assessment were high and the patient was also experiencing distressing levels of pain. From the image on the screen, you can see that the tissue was unhealthy, discoloured and friable. The clinician's treatment goals were to reduce the signs of local wound infection. For the infection management pathway, a silver barrier dressing was prescribed, initially for a period of two weeks, after which the clinician would reassess. The wound management plan consisted of debriding with a monofilament pad, cleansing with warm water and application of a silver barrier dressing every 72 hours. At the end of the first week, the decision was taken by the clinician to discontinue the silver barrier dressing as the clinical signs of infection were resolved. The patient was reported to be very happy with the reduction in pain levels and the amount of dressing changes they were having. The clinician completed a follow-up assessment after 20 days, at which stage the wound had reduced in size by 50 millimetres in length and 10 millimetres in width, with no wound bed depth. The wound bed itself was healthy and almost healed, with 70% granulating tissue and 30% epithelialization was present with low levels of exudate. Patient comfort was noted to be excellent during the wear time of the silver dressing and the patient's pain had fully resolved. The clinician noted the following benefits of using the infection management pathway. It allowed a systematic approach to differentiating between local infection and biofilm. It aided in the understanding of the different approaches to local infection and biofilm. It simplified dressing choice and eased decision making. And when utilising the pathway, the clinician noted that there's a clear and concise instruction and that the pathway has the potential to promote antimicrobial stewardship. OK, so now let's look at case study two. The 76 year old patient presented with a trauma wound on the right shin following a fall. The wound progressed into a venous leg ulcer and the patient was fully compliant with all treatment given. There was no significant history that was noted. Three previous types of antimicrobial dressings were used over a period of 43 days with no evidence of resolution of the signs and symptoms of wound infection. On assessment, the wound size was 42 millimetres in length and 23 millimetres wide. And the wound bed consisted of 95% granulation tissue and 5% slough. The tissue was discoloured and friable with the evident abscess lateral to the wound bed. Exudate levels at this initial assessment were moderate and the patient was not experiencing pain. Following the infection management pathway, a clinical decision was made to follow the local infection branch of the pathway as the following signs and symptoms were noted. This was despite the fact that the symptoms of the biofilm were also present and that was evident in the presence of the friable tissue and the more subtle hypergranulation. Those symptoms were erythema, warmth, edema, purulent discharge and delayed wound healing. 
the clinician's treatment goals were to reduce the signs of local wound infection and to reduce the area of overgranulation. Following the infection management pathway, a silver barrier dressing was prescribed for a period of two weeks, after which the clinician would reassess. The wound management plan consisted of cleansing with warm water and application of the silver barrier dressing every 72 hours. An absorbent pad was used as a secondary dressing with compression bandaging over the top. The patient was prescribed an antibiotic to treat the abscess that was lateral to the wound. The follow-up assessment took place 16 days later, at which stage the wound had reduced in size to 4mm in length and 2mm wide, with no visible signs of local infection. The wound bed was healthy and almost healed with 100% epithelialization and low levels of exudate. Patient comfort was noted to be excellent and with the patient stating that they were very pleased with the progress. The clinician noted the following benefits of using the infection management pathway. It allowed a systematic approach to differentiating between local infection and biofilm. It aided in the understanding of the different approaches to local infection and biofilm, simplified dressing choice and eased decision making. And when using the pathway, the clinician noted that they were more confident in identifying local wound infection. Check your knowledge and understanding. Try and answer the quiz questions. Amazing, well done. We're now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you have learned and apply it into your daily practice. If you're on the NMC register, then please click in the link in the description below to access a copy of the revalidation form. The form is in two parts with a front sheet where you simply fill in your details and a back sheet which allows for a deeper reflection. Adding to this reflection will mean that you'll be able to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you for your time today and please remember to look at the other sections of the Smith & Nephew Wing Club YouTube channel to access additional modules and to help you on your learning journey. Bye now.